a big deal here on the Brett Allen Show, a pop culture podcast. It's a Thanksgiving week special. We've had so many great guests recently, and today's episode will certainly not disappoint it. Will not disappoint you. I can't even speak. I'm so excited. Um, we are chatting with Carrie Byron, and most people would probably know you or her from Mythbusters, but she has gone on to do some amazing things. Uh, she has a book that is out and been out for quite some time, Crash Test Girl, which I have read, which is a fantastic book. And then she did some other projects as well, The White Rabbit Project, uh, you know, Crash Test World, a positive energy, and is a huge advocate for education and learning and just really so many other things. Carrie, welcome to the show. It's great to have you here today. It's great to be here. I'm thankful to be here in the theme of Thanksgiving. Yes, yes. I'm thankful to have you as well. Now, I obviously, we know you from Mythbusters and so many other things, but you, as I mentioned just now, have gone on to do a lot of other things. And, and, and I feel, uh, and you can add to this, please, a huge advocate for education and just children and sort of creating environments for them uh, to learn life lessons, scientific lessons. Um, when you left Mythbusters, we all know this kind of all ended and the show ended and was really the goal for you all along to educate and to just kind of make people have access to learning. Is that sort of what your mantra has been all along or have there been other things as well uh, that you have been doing as well? I wish the answer was yes, but it's absolutely not. I just had a very cool job and it turns out that explaining science to an audience when you're learning along with them because you don't have the background is more exciting because the screams yes. are real and I don't know what's going to happen. And I really was just approaching science like I approach art, you get your hands dirty and you really enjoy you know, fostering your curiosity. It just happened that a byproduct of Mythbusters turned out to be teachers were using it in classrooms for you know, physics explanations or the scientific method. And that is when I started to fall in love with the idea of using entertainment as inspiration for education. And it was, it was so much to see young people come up to me and say, I wanna become an engineer because I saw you doing it. And I didn't know that people who like science could wear combat boots. So yeah. <laughs> we just, you know, it, it kind of gave me that passion and gave me that kind of mantra through life. Yeah, I find that interesting because the fact that you all were doing these science projects, so to speak, as I would say real time, honestly, because we were kind of watching with you and even with other projects, you know, the White Rabbit Project and the other things, Crash Test World, sort of allowing us to come on this journey with you and sort of experience these things as well. And in your book, you talk a lot about uh, your go-to process for investigating and also finding things out about yourself that you didn't know existed in life lessons and things like that. When you were writing the book, was it sort of the same idea that you were kind of taking people on a journey and discovering these things about yourself as well and, and sort of allowing the audience like the Mythbusters folks and other people to sort of uh, come into your world a little bit and, and sort of experience these things along with you? Well, Mythbusters, we uh, use the scientific method as a narrative vehicle because it's it's just it's a really great way of critically thinking where you're asking a question you're forming a hypothesis you're experimenting you're collecting data and then you come up with your results from there and i feel like that works for any subject english if you're you're writing um you know a report on huck finn it's going to be the same thing anything that you can apply the scientific method to so i basically just do that to life you know I can apply it to dating. I can apply it to looking for a new job, anything, because it's just critical thinking. Um, when I wrote the book, I would once again love to say that I was doing it to bring the fans closer, but I wrote the book on a dare. Um, <laughs> I love it. That's great. Homer Hickam, who wrote Rocket Boys, which became October Sky with Jake Gyllenhaal later, he and I and uh, Thomas Dolby, that guy who wrote You Blinded Me with Science, and a couple other bizarre people like Reed Timmer, the, 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 the uh, storm chaser, we were all sitting in a bar 
after we had all done talks, I believe in Iowa, and just kind of BSing and telling each other stories. And Homer's like, oh my God, you have great stories. You should write a book. I'm like, dude, no way. That's what you do. Like I do this TV stuff. I'm a meat puppet. You write books. And he's like, no, 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 you should write a book. And then after a while, I'm like, okay, whatever. Sure, I'll write a book. And then the next day, his book agent called and said, well, Homer tells me you're gonna write a book. And I'm like, that is <laughs> terrifying. That is no, that is so scary. But then also that same day, I was sitting with my daughter and she was scared to do a school project. She had to stand up in front of the class. And I'm just like, baby, you know, bravery is being scared and doing it anyway. Superheroes aren't, aren't, you know, they, they, they don't they don't just have capes and superpowers like real people have to just be scared and jump in and that's what makes them heroes and i walked out of the room and like damn it now i gotta write a book because i gotta live this advice that i gave her so i just started and um failure is always an option the first uh pitch i wrote got turned down by everybody it was long it was basically just all my diaries squished up and i thought that that was going to be interesting enough i thought i could come in with my eat pray love and be like here <laughs> yes. you're like nah we want this more about Mythbusters, and this isn't what we're looking for and i went home and i was slightly defeated but i was like okay what do we do here with this experiment of life we find experts when we don't know what we're doing so I got a writer to help me <laughs> figure out how to write a good pitch and go repitch it. And uh, instead of getting turned down by everybody, I got like tons and tons of offers. And I took the one that was uh, the editor was the most interesting to me. Yeah, that's a great way to do things, I think. And uh, I love the fact that your child helped uh, sort of motivate you uh, to keep moving. Sometimes our children are great motivators when it comes to getting things done, especially on depending on the age, but really also I think in the reverse help us as adults. Um, I, you know, it's kind of like our mini sponsors, right? They kind of keep us accountable in life. And, uh, you know, to use that term from AA, it, it to help us uh, be better people really. And even my seven-year-old is great at that. Uh, depending on what the subject matter is, but it's great. I, I think that's fantastic that that has kind of what has driven you uh, in using the scientific method just in life. I like the idea too about dating. I didn't really think about it in those terms, but really these dating websites are really kind of like scientific experiments really in ways, even when you go meet that person, let's say you meet them online, meeting them in public and not really knowing if this is going to turn out to be great myth busted or not, so to speak, you know what I mean? And really uh, kind of being in the same vein, so to speak, super fascinating. Well, I mean, dating is just an experiment to gather data and either you're gathering data about yourself or that person, you walk away a little bit smarter with something that you know that you want or don't want. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that could be another show idea. You could do a whole thing on dating and sort of, uh, getting people and gathering data and stuff like that. I think really Mythbusters was so iconic for so many people and on for so many seasons that people had the opportunity to enjoy it. And we waited, uh, from week to week to see what you guys were going to do and sort of surprise us weekly. And, the show was on for so long when you got pitched the idea or you guys came up with the idea to do this show, obviously several seasons down the road, you started doing things, you know, from like movies, television shows, if things were going to work, how do you keep ideas like that flowing for a show like that? Do you have a producer that helps deliver things or are you guys working on this just independently trying to come up with ideas to, uh, produce episodes on a week to week basis, especially as the show gained more and more popularity and became a staple in people's television regimen. Honestly, it was all of the above. Uh, we always had a very active message board before it was, you know, really, a, we didn't have Twitter or Instagram or anything. So we had a message board that we would read all of the things from people. And there was lots of suggestions. We got 30% of the myths from the people that would um, bring them in. We got a lot from Snopes. Uh, and oh, yeah. 
Let's just face it, the internet is just a bastion of propagating misinformation. So there was so much to pull from there. And we were all, you know, avid readers. And when you go out and meet people, they're like, I got a myth for you. We, we, we got one from a fourth grade class that sent it in to us in a letter. It was just, we just farmed it from wherever we could get it. Yeah, I mean, it's very fascinating because I binged several episodes uh, before our conversation just to kind of refresh because it had been some time, you know, since I had watched. And uh, some of the things that you all tackled was just so fascinating. It's interesting you mentioned Snopes. I had completely forgot about that even being something that existed. Um, I imagine, though, had this show come out now with social media and uh, Instagram and Twitter and all the resources that exist. I, I mean, it would just, I can imagine a cavalcade of challenges that you guys could address on a weekly basis because <laughs> the internet is so insane. You know what I mean? It's just crazy yeah. to even think about. To be honest, if the show came out now, it wouldn't make air um, because back then it was new and exciting and the wild west so stations like Discovery were taking a chance okay. on shows like Mythbusters. It was the beginning of reality-based television. And so our first few episodes, we didn't have the stuff yet. We didn't have the it factor yet. It was awkward and rolling and we were trying to find our voice. Now, when you pitch a show, you've got to be going out the gate. Like there's no time to slowly develop an audience and develop a voice. It's, 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 a, it's a lot more upfront because there's thousands of stations and there's so much content. So if you don't make a splash right away, you're gone and they try something else. That's just kind of the way it is now. The Wild West, which is cable, is now old school and yeah. streaming is the new frontier. And so streaming, you know, you've got your Netflix and your Amazon. So the, the, this is the place where new and exciting television is happening. Um, and that's why as my beta testing 12 year old daughter is also inspiring me, I uh, just launched a platform with Jenny Bukos of uh, Project Explorer fame. Uh, the two of us and Andrew Zimmern are putting out this platform that is a subscription based, um, almost like Netflix for education, short format videos that come with lesson plans if you're a teacher, so that we can give kids in that teen to tween era give them something to watch that isn't crap because it's mostly just terrible just <laughs> bad bad educate uh, like uh entertainment for for kids in that age group like the fifth through the 10th grade i see what my daughter's looking at and i'm like it's either boring and stiff education or it's just rolling through TikTok eating weird things so oh. i need to figure out what was in the middle and I really loved what Mythbusters did that teachers used a section that was really exciting and then built a lesson plan around it. So that's why I paired up to launch this site called Explore, E-X-P-L-R. Um, we have a home version and a classroom version. Home version is just family-friendly entertainment that has some beautiful series. And then the classroom version, you know, it's, it's really, um, it, it's, it's priced really low so that students can use it globally. Yeah, that was my next question because I had heard about that. So that's available for people to experience now or coming down the road. Yeah, actually, it's it's launched now. And of course, because it's Black Friday, this is pandemic proof and supply chain proof. We're putting like 25% off on the site. So if you want to check out explore.com uh, or exploremedia.com, sorry, you will uh, be able to get a discount or just go hit me up on social. I've got that stuff all posted. Yeah. And we'll link that in our show notes for the podcast portion and the video cast that will come out on Thanksgiving date, which is when this episode will air. So oh, fantastic. Yeah. We'll put that so people can access this. And, and I have to agree with you, Carrie, you know, having a seven-year-old, it's, it's interesting to see uh, what is out there for kids to watch. Cause it's that, or, you know, video game playthroughs, Minecraft, you know, or and my son's looking at me now going Minecraft, you know, it's interesting. Uh, I love all those things too. I do too. But I think education is important as well. And I, it brings me to another piece because I've heard you talk about this in interviews before about how we talk to our children and talk to them like they're normal people and not this cutesy, you know, approach to when, especially when it comes to learning, because it, it is just 
a lot of nonsense out there. And I'm wondering if my child is even getting this information or, you know, if it's just, you know, punching down, so to speak, and talking to them on a level uh, that's kind of like, you know, he's seven, but let's talk to them like they're three. And uh, no, it, the kids are so sophisticated, and especially yeah. kids now, they're cyber natives. They have so much information that they constantly get. My daughter talks like a tiny little congressman. It's amazing. Yeah. Her vast knowledge of what's going on in the world is so different than when I was her age. So I know for a fact that when you make shows for kids, we the data that I've collected is that if you want to make a show for a 12 year old, talk to them like they're 35. Yeah, do not underestimate their intelligence. Mythbusters was never a kid's show. In fact, we used to have little Easter eggs of dirty jokes in the beginning that oh, you know, parents yeah. understood, because it was a grown up show. It's just it was family friendly. There was no swearing. We were investigating science. So it became something that kids liked because we weren't going, okay, we're gonna do a science project. Let's make slime. You know, it was it was real. Yeah, even some of the grosser type uh, things that you guys attacked, um, it was fun. You know what I'm saying? And it made people want to peek behind the curtain, so to speak, and um, kind of watch and, you know, what's going to happen next and that sort of thing. I love that you, like some probably could, and just sort of give up the torch, so to speak, and not uh, continue on and, and that you've developed new content kind of like LeVar Burton did with reading rainbow, you know, and sort of revamped all of that and made it accessible for people at home, homeschoolers and the education system too. So you can have access to learning and things like that. Sort of looking back at all of these things that you've done, are there any highlight moments from your career that you kind of look at that were defining for you and sort of kind of motivated you and kept you going or was everything just a great experience and you just kind of did it uh, like you approach other things you know and just kind of seeing if this is going to work or not I try really hard to create opportunities by saying yes to a lot of things, things that I might think are a pain in the butt to go do, but then I'll meet somebody and it might inspire a thought or it might be a person that becomes an incredible connection. So I've definitely had moments in my career where I felt stalled. And so I looked to find somebody who I wanted to be, or there was something about them that I found very intriguing and went and asked them about their journey. And generally this is advice I give people who are getting out of college, find somebody doing what you wanna do, talk to them, ask them about their journey. Don't go in asking for help or what you need. Go and ask them about theirs. They give you all the insight and generally they want to help you open doors because they can see that, that you have an interest in them for real and not just using them for a connection. But it, it, it ends up reciprocating sooner or later. So I, I would say when I met the head of Science Channel and we came up with um, uh, head rush which was a kind of a sideshow for mythbusters that was incredibly inspiring to me because i saw that i could do something different on my own with my ideas and it made me more hungry for more of the entertainment and i realized this is going to be my career when i met jenny bucos for uh from project explorer which is a nonprofit, and talked to her we both wanted to change the world by creating empathy and showing kids across the globe are more alike than different so we could create a you know, more of a global workforce that works together. I am meeting her was just, it was a, a, a big bang moment for me, which has propelled me in my current career because it's just, you evolve or go extinct. And I am going to continually keep evolving and uh, my daughter will be my inspiration. Yeah, that's fantastic. I imagine though, and I could be wrong, uh, that you probably get asked all the time if Mythbusters is coming back. That's probably the one question that people want to know. When you get into those situations and you are clearly an individual about evolving and moving forward, trying new things, that's what I'm picking up. How do you handle those moments where people might ask you those types of questions? Or as you mentioned just now, about reaching out to and, 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 and making it more than just being used for a connection. I, I kind of want to explore that as a rabbit trail, so to speak, because mm -hmm. um, I, I'm very curious about that, especially in this business where, you know, it's about connecting and, and doing those things and sort of deciding this is something that I want to participate in or not <laughs> you want to stay away from <laughs> as a public figure. 
Yeah, well, you know, I am very honest and accessible. And if you want to ask me questions about Mythbusters, I'm going to tell you like Mythbusters is not coming back for a few reasons. One, Jamie and Adam are never going to do the show again together. They've gone on to do different things that they are super into. And it's not going to be the same without Grant. No. So, you know, when Grant passed away, it's that was a big moment and that chemistry can't be created. That chemistry was there, which is why I think that we were so good together as we, me, Tori and Grant were completely different people, but we were friends with respect for each other and um, knew each other before we became that team. You know, we, we are actual friends. So that's, you can't recreate Mythbusters. You can't recreate that time period. We can be inspired by and stem off of it to do amazing things. I've done a ton of shows with Tori. He is uh, totally a friend for life. We are definitely close. So I will continue to do as much TV with him as possible. I love it. Well, this is fantastic. A lot of great projects uh, in the works and also things that are currently accessible now. Um, we'll put Carrie's website in our show notes to access all of this and all the educational programs and things that she's got available. And if you haven't read Crash Test Girl, please do. It's a fantastic book, very inspiring um, overall. Carrie, thanks for hanging out with us today. I really appreciate your time. It was lovely hanging out with you. And let me just throw this out there to your, your people is... Uh, on social media, I run my own Twitters and Instagrams and such. And if you hit me up on Twitter with a question, I am likely to answer you back because uh, I, I, I love engaging. So hit me up. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you so much. Nice talking to you. Happy Thanksgiving. You too. 